Okay, we're now ready to finish up. We have four problems left, although they're gonna take some time. They have multiple parts and we'll just dive in. So 47 says, given that tangent of theta equals negative three fourths and theta is in quadrant two, find the following. And there's three parts, sine of two theta, cosine two theta, tan two theta. So once again, we have formulas for each of these. So let's just do that first. So 47, information we're given is that tangent of theta equals negative three fourths. And theta is in quadrant two. And the first thing we're asked to determine is the sine of two theta. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, we have formulas for what's called double angles. It's interesting. So here's sine of two theta, two sine u, cosine u. It's interesting for cosine of two u, there are actually three different formulas. So if, if you ever need to do a cosine of a double angle, you can choose which one you want to use. Then here's the tangent of the double angle. So this first part of the problem is, it's gotta be two sine cosine. So sine of two theta is two sine theta So now here's what we're told about theta and we need to plug in sine theta, cosine theta. So what we're gonna do is gonna take this information and create a right triangle. Don't really care about the negative as of now, all I care about is the numbers. So tangent three fourths, that's TOA, so-called TOA, opposite, over adjacent, the Pythagorean formula would give me the hypotenuse to five. Now, because theta is in quadrant two, I'm gonna write up here quadrant two to remind myself whenever I go get information about theta, I have to remember it's in quadrant two because that's gonna affect whether the value will be positive or negative. So, Let's do this, sine of theta. Here's a triangle for theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. But I have to ask myself now, this angle's in quadrant two. What is the sine in quadrant two? Well, in quadrant two, the sine is positive. So the three-fifths stays positive times the cosine of theta. So here's my triangle for theta, cosine, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse. Now I say, okay, but that angle is in quadrant two. What is the cosine in quadrant two? Well, in quadrant two, the cosine's negative. So therefore, four fifths has to be actually negative four fifths. So now, two times three times four is 24 with a negative. The denominator is five times five. And that should be the answer. So B and C, we do the same thing, except use a different formula. So B is cosine of two theta. I really I have my choice here. I'll probably just choose, I don't know, I'll just choose this one here. One minus two sine squared of theta. Now I know sine of theta, either from the triangle from the triangle, sine opposite over hypotenuse and I'm in quadrant two, so it's positive. So it's 
Sine of theta is three fifths. You have to square it. So this is nine over 25. Nine times two is one minus 18 over 25. If I combine these, one becomes 25 over 25. So 25 minus 18 should be seven. And your denominator is 25. So 7 25ths, I hope, and that is correct. And then C, they ask for the tangent of 2 theta. Once again, it's a formula. 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared of theta. So 2 tangent of theta over one minus tangent squared of theta. That's interesting, I can look at the triangle, but you know what? Actually beginning the problem there, he gave me theta, it's negative three fourths. So two times negative three fourths over one minus negative three fourths squared. Two times negative three fourths, actually the two and the four sort of cancel. This is minus three halves. You square this, this is like nine sixteenths. So one minus nine sixteenths, this is like 16 over 16. It's been seven sixteenths. So as a complex fraction, you take the top fraction and you multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. If I didn't make any mistakes, I hope that's the correct answer and it is. All right, not too bad. Forty-eight. Write an equivalent expression for cosine of the fourth of x that does not involve any powers of sine or cosine greater than one. All right, this seems a little bizarre. So let me explain it, and then we can try and work out the problem. You know what I'm gonna do, even though it says X, I'm gonna call it theta just because I like to use theta better as an angle. So basically, we want to rewrite cosine to the fourth power of theta. But when we rewrite it, we don't want any exponents. Say, well, how do we do that? Well, one of the formulas for the double angle allows us to do it. So let me show it to you and show you how it works. Look at this second one right here. Actually, let's use this one. Let me write this formula down, then I'll show you what it means. So it's cosine of two u equals two cosine squared u minus one. Let me write that formula down. I'll write it in terms of theta. Cosine two theta equals two cosine squared of theta minus one. So here's the key. Over here, we have a cosine squared of theta. Over here, we have a cosine of two theta. But the real key is, over here, we have an exponent. Here, we do not. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this little formula here, little equation. I'm going to solve it for cosine squared theta. In other words, get cosine squared theta by itself. First thing I'm going to do, I'll add one to both sides.
I'm going to get cosine squared of theta by itself. I divide both sides by two. That's what this does. This says anytime I have a cosine squared of theta, I can replace it with this. But the key thing to realize is if I replace cosine squared of theta with this, all of a sudden, you know what? I don't have any exponents. In other words, if I have a cosine squared of theta in my expression and I, for some reason, want to get rid of all exponents, I could replace cosine squared of theta with this and then I don't have any exponents. So that's the principle. So this is key thing we sort of have to remember. Now this problem was they wanted me to take cosine to the fourth of theta and rewrite it with no exponents. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite cosine to the fourth of theta as cosine squared of theta squared, right? That's just like saying x to the fourth is square x squared, right? The rule is you multiply those exponents. And now what I'm going to do is for this cosine squared of theta, I'm going to replace it with this right here. So instead of a cosine squared of theta, I'm going to have cosine of two theta plus one over two. And I'm going to square that whole thing. Because you can see here inside these parentheses, I had a squared, now I don't have a squared. You say, well, that's nice, but you know what? You still got an exponent out here and that's true. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these parentheses. And by that, I mean, this exponent gets applied to the top and the bottom. So really what I'm gonna have is right, that squared over four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and foil this out, right? So just so you're clear, the foil means when you have something in parentheses squared, it means you multiply it by itself. I don't think I have enough room over there. So cosine two theta, now I foil. Cosine squared of two theta plus cosine of two theta plus cosine of two theta plus one all over four. If I combine like terms, cosine squared of two theta plus two cosine two theta plus one all over four. So I had made some progress because I began with the cosine to the fourth. So that's what was four. By the time I get to here, I've still got an exponent, but instead of being to the fourth, it's being cosine squared. So I haven't reached my goal yet because I still have a exponent. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do this again. Except it's a little tricky because now I don't have cosine squared theta. I have cosine squared of two theta. So really what I need to do is I need to rewrite this formula. Instead of theta, I need to make it two theta. So I think I can do that because what I do is every place I have a theta, I just make it two theta. So 
almost like substitution. So if I make this theta two theta, this becomes cosine of four theta. All right, so I replace this theta with two theta and this theta with two theta. So now I'm gonna take this and I'll plug it in right here. Whoops, I'll plug it in right here. Because when I do that, then I think I'm finally rid of all exponents. So instead of cosine squared of two theta, I'm gonna put in cosine of four theta plus one over two plus two cosine two theta plus one all that over four. Now the good thing is, this is messy, but there are no exponents. So once again, this all right here equals cosine to the fourth of theta. So I've sort of accomplished my goal, but I need to clean this up. I can't really leave it like this. What I'm gonna have to do first is add these three. I'm gonna have to get a common denominator of two. So when I do, I have cosine four theta plus one plus four cosine of two theta plus two all over two all over four. This four moves up here, so this now becomes cosine of four theta. I should combine the one and the two plus three plus four cosine of two theta all over eight. Now, I think in the answer, I'd like to split this up into three separate terms. Cosine of four theta over eight. A lot of times I have to call it one eighth cosine of four theta plus three eighths. This over eight is gonna be and I check my answer three eighths plus cosine of two theta over two. Yep, that's correct. So we've accomplished the goal. We've gone from cosine of the fourth of theta to all of a sudden there's no expense over here. All right, that's the kind of thing we do in math sometimes. They're not practical it is, but sort of like work like crossword puzzle. It's just, it's like brain exercise. All right, two more. Now look at 49, this is actually sort of a jump back to what we were doing a little bit ago. Seems sort of out of place. Find an exact answer for sine of 15 degrees using a half angle formula. Recall that 45 minus eight equals 15. Using a half angle formula. That actually doesn't make sense. Because my thought would be Well, you can use a half angle formula, but this, there's really two ways to do this. Maybe I'll quickly explain it. So basically, here's what happens sometimes. We want to know the exact value of the sine of 50 degrees. So we're not going to grab our calculator. We're not going to give a decimal answer. We want an exact value. Well, 15 degrees is not a special angle, so I don't really know the exact value of this. However, what the hint told you was that, you know what, 15 is 45 minus 30. 
So instead of 15, how about I rewrite 15 as the sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. And why do I do that? Because now 45 degrees and 30 degrees are special angles. And I can go back and use the formula for the sine of the difference of two angles. So sine, cosine, minus cosine, sine. So I can say this is gonna be sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees minus the cosine of 45 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. And maybe we'll do it real quick. Square root of two over two, cosine of 30 is square root of three over two, cosine of 45, square root of two over two, sine of 30 is one half. Looks like square root of six minus square root of two over four. But I think there's another way because um, you can also say, well, 15 degrees is the sine of 50 degrees over two. So therefore I could say, How about I rewrite this, the sine of 30 degrees over two. And now this is like a half angle formula, right? Where half angle formulas are like this. So in a sense, theta is 30. Now we haven't used half angle formulas yet. But the sine of a half angle is this right here. Now for us, I know my answer is going to be a positive answer because it's in the first quadrant. So if I write down this formula, sine of theta over two is going to be the square root one minus cosine of theta over two. So I replace theta with 30, I have sine 30 degrees over two is one minus cosine of 30 degrees over two. And I can calculate this because cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. Now, if I try and simplify this, combine these in one fraction, it's gonna be two minus square root of three over two, all over two. These two can combine into two minus square root of three over four. Now, I'm trying to see, theoretically, this answer should be the same as this answer. So I'm trying to see if it will be somehow. Let's play around with this, see if I can get it to equal this just for fun. If I split this up into two, um, Trying to think what I can do with this. The only thing I know I can do with it, I'll just try this just for fun. Normally the way you get a square root is you multiply top and bottom by the same thing. So, seems crazy. This seems really crazy. So this is going to be two minus square root of three over two 
Yeah, I don't know. One quick way to see if these are the same is if I grab my calculator. I mean, it may not be the same. I may have made a mistake. Matter of fact, well, I can look at the answer key. This definitely isn't the answer key, but I wonder if this is the same thing. So let me, here's a way you can check. I'm going to actually calculate square root of six minus square root of two divided by four. 0 0.259. I'm going to see what this equals, or yeah, what this, what this equals. So it's two minus three square root divided by four, and then the square root of that. And you know, it is the same thing. So somehow, if we had the time and I wanted to, I could try and get this to look like this. But the point is, two different ways to get an exact value for the sine of 15 degrees. I'll have to try and fix this because it's sort of confusing because it says use a half angle formula, which you could do. But then it gives you information to use like the formula for the difference of two angles. So I'm gonna have to change this maybe a little confusing. All right, let's move on to the last problem. Now we have just a regular half angle kind of problem. So given tangent, theta is 8 fifteenths, and theta is in the quadrant of three, find the exact value of the following. So now the three half angles. All right, half angles can be a little more involved than double angles. So let me write that information, then we'll talk about half angles and explain why it's have to, a few extra things to consider. So tangent of theta equals eight, fifteenths and theta is in quadrant three. First one we're asked for is sine of theta over two. If you look at the formula sheet, we have formulas for the half angles. Here they are. A couple interesting things. First of all, in terms of trig functions, all of them Once you know the cosine, then you can find all three of these half angles. Interesting. Square roots make it sort of messy. And then what's really interesting is you have a plus or minus in front of all these. Sometimes plus or minuses are there if there's like two possible answers, a plus and a minus. That's not gonna happen with these half angles. The half angle is either going to be plus or minus, and it's going to be our job, even before we start doing the calculations, we'll be able to determine whether it should be plus or minus. So let's do that first. And this is normally what I do first. Theta is in quadrant three. Quadrant three in radians, pi is here. 3 pi over 2, this is quadrant 3. So if we express this like a double angle, which is pretty common, you can say theta is larger than pi, but less than 3 pi over 2. So theta is greater than equal to pi, less than 3 pi over 2. That's what it means to be in quadrant 3, right? between pi and three pi over two. However, I'm gonna be looking up answers for half angles. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this initial sort of double-sided inequality for theta and I'm gonna convert it to what it looks like for a half angle. Meaning, if I want to go from theta to theta over two, I can do that, but I have to divide all three parts by two. So therefore, divide 
pi by two becomes pi over two. This is a little tricky. If you divide three pi over two by two, what happens is the two moves up here. So you have three pi over four. So based upon being told that theta is between pi and three pi over two, I've now determined that the half angle theta over two is gonna be between pi over two and three pi over four. Pi over two is right here. Three pi over four is right here. So the half angle is going to be in here. And I'm gonna mark down the half angle is in quadrant two. The original angle is in quadrant three, but the half angle is in quadrant two. Because the half angle is in quadrant two, when I look at the formula for the half angle, you notice it says plus or minus. Now, since my half angle is in quadrant two, what is the sign of an angle in quadrant two going to be? It's going to be positive. So when I write down my formula, I don't write plus or minus. I simply already know that this thing has to be a positive value because my half angle is in quadrant two. Now in a minute, when we do the cosine, when I look at the cosine, well, the cosine of the half angle, the half angle is in quadrant two, what's the cosine in quadrant two? The cosine in quadrant two is a negative. So when I get ready to do the cosine of the half angle, I'm gonna have to have the negative as part of the formula. So that's what that happens. So doing this right here, allows me to get the correct formula for the half angle. So now I need to go and do this calculation, but what is the cosine of theta? Well, let's go back to what they told us. They told us the tan of theta is eight over 15. I'm gonna do like I always do. I'm gonna take that information and I'm gonna build a right triangle Tanja Soka Toa, eight or Toa, opposite over adjacent. So this is going to be eight squared plus 15 squared. It's like 64 plus, grab my calculator for this. 15 squared is 225 plus 64. The square root, that's nice, 17. So based upon this, now it's key, when I go start using values of theta from this triangle, I have to recall that that angle is in quadrant three. So now I think I'm ready to do this calculation. one minus cosine of theta. Here's my theta triangle, cosine so ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, but it's in quadrant three. What is the cosine going to be in quadrant three? The cosine is negative. So therefore it's gonna be negative 15 over 17. And now it becomes like an algebra simplification calculation. One minus, minus 15 over 17 means one plus. If I'm gonna combine these into one fraction, I change one to 17 over 17. So 17 plus 15, it's like 32 over 17, all over two. This two moves up here. Thirty-two over thirty-four. I can reduce this, divide by two. Square root of sixteen is four. 
So now theoretically, I could go with that answer. Maybe they want me to not leave a square root in the denominator. I'm gonna see what the key says. Actually, the key has this right here, so I'm good with that. So that's the sine of theta over two. B, cosine of theta over two. I talked about this a few minutes ago. The cosine formula looks just like the sine, right? Differences, the sine is one minus, the cosine is one plus. But before I write the formula, I need to figure out what it's gonna be plus or minus. And I just said a few minutes ago, we know that a half angle is in quadrant two. What's the cosine in quadrant two? It's a negative. Therefore, I have to use the negative formula. for the cosine of the half angle. Now I've already determined cosine of theta is negative 15 over 17. If I combine these, this is gonna be 17 over 17 minus 15 over 17. This comes up, oops, forgot the negative. So it's really two over 34. I can reduce that to one over 17. Of course, square root of one is just one. So the cosine of a half angle, I hope is negative one over square root of 17, which is correct. But then finally, As for the tangent of the half angle, I look at that formula. Once again, they're gonna be a plus or a minus. Now I know the half angle is in quadrant two. What's the tangent in quadrant two? The tangent's negative. So I've got to use the negative formula for tangent. And it is one minus cosine of theta over one plus cosine of theta. Now, I know cosine of theta is negative 15 over 17. One plus negative 15 over 17. So if I make this center of 17, once again, this is plus, that's gonna be 32 over 17. And this is 17 over 17 minus 15, two over 17. 17s cancel out. I'm forgetting my negatives here. 16, actually square root of 16 is four. Amazingly enough, the tangent of the half angle is negative four. All right, that's the test review. So hopefully you get stuck on any of these problems, you can look here and this can help you out.